Use the real zeros of the polynomial function y is equal to x to the third plus 3x squared plus x plus 3 to determine which of the following could be its graph. So there's a, several ways of trying to approach it. One, we could just look at where, what the zeros of these graphs are, what they appear to be, and then see if this function is actually zero when x is equal to that. So for example, in graph A, and, and first of all, I, I, as always, I encourage you to pause this video and try it before I about to I, before I go out, before I show you how to solve it. So I'm assuming you've given a go at it. So let's look at this first graph here. It's zero. It clearly has a zero at right at this point. And just by trying to inspect this graph, it looks like this is at x is equal to negative three, if I were to estimate. So that looks like the point negative three, zero. So let's see if if we substitute x equals negative three here, whether we get y equaling zero. So let's see, y, let's see, negative three to the third power plus three times negative three squared plus negative three plus three, what does this give us? This gives us negative 27. This gives us positive 27. This gives, of course, negative three, this is plus three. These two cancel out, these two cancel out. This does indeed equal zero. So this was actually pretty straightforward. Graph A does indeed work. You could try graph B right here, and you would have to verify that we have a zero at negative, this looks like negative two, another one this looks like at one, another one that looks at three, and, it, and, if, and since we already know that A is the answer, none of these, if you if we input x equals negative two, x equals one, or x equals three into this function definition right over here, you should not get zero, and you'll see that this doesn't work. Same thing for this one. If you tried four or seven for your x's, you should not get zero over here, because we see that the real function does not equal zero at four or seven. Another giveaway that this is not going to be the function is that you're going to have a total you're going to have a total of three roots. Let me write this down. So you're going to have a total of three roots. Three roots. Now, those three roots could be real or complex roots. So, and the, the big key is complex roots come in pairs. Complex roots in pairs. So you might have a situa situation with three real roots, and this is an example with three real roots, although we know this actually isn't the function right over here. Or if you have one complex root, you're gonna have another complex root. So if you have, if you have any complex roots, the next possibility is one real and two complex roots. Two complex roots. And this right over here has two real roots. That's not a possibility. That would somehow imply that you have only one complex. You only have one complex root, which is not going to be a, it's not going to be, it, that, that is not a possibility. Now another way that you could have thought about this, and this would have been the longer way, but let's say you didn't have the graphs here for you and someone asked you to just find the roots, well you could have attempted to factor this. And this one actually is factorable. y is equal to x to the third plus 3x squared plus x plus three. As mentioned in previous videos, factoring things of degree higher than two, there is something of an art to it. But oftentimes, if someone expects you to, you might be able to group things in interesting ways, especially when you see that several terms have some common factors. So for example, these first two terms right over here, these first two terms right over here, have the common factor x squared. So if you were to factor that out, you get x squared times x plus three, which is neat, because that looks a lot like the second two terms. We could write that as plus one times x plus three. And then you can factor the x plus three out. We could factor the x plus three out, and we would get x plus three times x squared times x squared plus one. x squared plus one, and now, your zeros are going to happen, or this whole y, remember this is equal to y. y is going to be equal, y is going to equal zero if either one of these factors is equal to zero. So when does x plus three equal zero? Well, subtract three from both sides. That happens when x is equal to negative three. When does x squared equal zero? When does x squared, or when does x squared plus one equal zero, I should say? Well, when x squared is equal to negative one. 
Well, there's no real x's, no real valued x's. There, there's no real number x's such that x squared is equal to negative one. X is going to be x is going to be an imaginary, or I guess I'll I'll just say in more general terms, it's going to be complex valued. So once again, you see there's you're gonna have a pair of complex roots and you have one, you have one real root at x is equal to negative three.